The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com. Welcome back to the show. Today on the bonus show, Lewis, big, big, big time bonus show today. AOL has purchased the Huffington Post. We will talk about Brazil possibly adding happiness to its constitution. Teabaggers, careful. This is your, your head would probably explode if you heard this story about what Brazil is doing. Uh, fair to say, Lewis? Mm -hmm, definitely. And we'll talk about a lot of other stuff. Lewis wants to talk about the Black Eyed Peas political statements that were made at the Super Bowl. We'll see if that is allowed. Uh, and plenty more we'll be talking about. So davidpackman.com slash membership. And by the way, still going on. We're not publishing this anywhere. We're just mentioning it here on the show. davidpackman.com slash birthday. Special offer on membership. If you've been waiting to do it or if you've been disgusted at the idea of becoming a member, let me allay those fears. This is the time to do it. davidpackman.com slash birthday. Let's get to my interview with David Silverman. Uh, there's really nothing to say. Let's just get right into it. This is probably one of the more compelling discussions we've had on the show uh, recently. Joining us is David Silverman, president of American Atheists. Atheist.org is the website. Great to talk to you, David. Thank you for having me on, David. So with great interest, I've been watching some of your recent appearances. Bill O'Reilly, you were also on, I think it was the Fox News, the morning thing that they do over there. I don't know exactly what it is. Um, and a lot of our listeners have been emailing me saying you should talk to Dave Silverman. The big question I have is when Bill O'Reilly said you can't explain how the tides work, so therefore God must exist, I think you really could have come back at him better there. You, you could have said, we know all about the tides. We know about the moon. We know about gravity. But you didn't. And my, my listeners demand to know, why not? Okay. Here's the scoop. When you're on a regular television show, let's say you're on, let's say you're on the first one that you mentioned, the Fox and Friends, okay? If I do an eight-minute segment on Fox and Friends, I usually get three, four minutes of talking. <laughs> when you're on with Bill O'Reilly, eight minutes turns into one minute of talking. I had to get in sound bites. Now, Bill, what he tries to do, and what many people try to do, is they try to control the conversation. If I want to talk about something, he's going to try and derail me and talk about something else. I had seconds to talk on that show. Okay, if you if you listen to the number of times I had, number of minutes I had to talk on that show, it's nothing. When he brought up that point, and the same goes for when he brought up the number of atheists, I had the choice of answering that question or bringing the conversation back to what I wanted to talk about. I didn't want to spend any of my time at all talking about lunar gravity. Hmm. I didn't want to spend any of my time talking about the definition of atheist. Are we 1.6% or, or, or does that include agnostics and does that include secular humanists? If we were in a situation where I had more time to talk, I would have done that. What about but though, as an aside, say, well, we know all about gravity, but, and then boom, right into your next point. You know what? Hindsight is twenty twenty. But yeah. if I had fed him anything, my fear was that he would have taken me on that path. I didn't want to give him any fuel because any fuel you'll give the man, you have to understand, Bill O'Reilly is not stupid. He is a master at what he does. Definitely. And if you give him fuel, he'll take it. Bill O'Reilly is not stupid. He is not ignorant. He knows exactly what makes the tides. But I'm not going to play that game. If he brings me on that show, that's fine. That's, I'm really happy that, I, that I'm on that show. But damn it, I'm going to talk about what I want to talk about. And I'm not going to let him take me off subject. And that's exactly why. I've had guests who have done O'Reilly's show give me little snippets of what the atmosphere is like be off, the, uh, you know, off camera there. What's it like for somebody like you? I mean, we know that your views certainly don't correspond with the on-air narrative at Fox News. But right. behind the scenes, who knows? Maybe the cameramen are, are all atheists. I mean, who really knows? What was it like when, you know, before you went on the show or after? Okay, well, first of all, I will tell you straight up, there are tons and tons of atheists at Fox News behind the cameras. Hmm and behind the microphones. And I know this not because I ask them, but because they sneak up and tell me, <laughs> okay? Uh, and at that interview, at that time, I was actually doing uh, a couple of different uh, events in New York City. So afterwards, I stayed in the green room and hung out for a couple hours. And the atheists just came right out of the woodwork. <laughs> there are lots and lots of atheists. Now, um, as far as what the atmosphere is, you know, when you're off camera, I need you to understand that, you know, people have, have, have made fun of the face that I made when he had the whole tie goes in, tie goes out. This is the scoop. 
Bill O'Reilly and I sat down at the table for a, a solid two minutes before the camera started rolling. Hmm. Now, this is my second time on the O'Reilly Factor. The first time, they mic'd me up beforehand, they sat me down, cameras rolled, end of, end of the segment, off, and, all, and, all, and on I went. Um, but this time, I actually had time to talk to the man. He's eloquent. He is knowledgeable. Hmm. He's polite. He's courteous. He knew about Madeline Murray O'Hare. He knew about Ron Barrier, uh, the national spoke, the former national spokesperson of American Atheists. He knew about Annie Laurie Gaylor. He had educated questions to ask. And then the cameras started rolling. And we started duking it out. We started fighting it. And then he comes out with tie goes in, tie goes out. And that look on my face, it, it, that, that, that puzzled look that everybody likes to talk about, <laughs> if you watch the tape, that look directly uh, uh, precedes a realization that you can see on camera that I'm talking to a fictional person. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm talking to the oh, on-air persona of Bill O'Reilly. Oh, OK. Well, let's talk about, well, maybe Zeus does. If you're going to pull the argument from ignorance, well, let's use the argument from ignorance to talk about Zeus. And yes, I do know that Thor does not live on Mount Olympus, that Zeus lives on Mount Olympus. And as soon as I said it, I knew it was wrong. I knew it was going to get crap about it. So stop giving me crap about it out there. Uh, let me ask <laughs> you, you mentioned agnosticism. Do you consider agnostics part of atheists or not? Yes. You yeah. do? It, yeah. An atheist is a very broad term. Hmm. It means you don't have a God. If you don't have a God because you've never learned about a God, you're an atheist. If you don't have a God because you don't think there's any way we could ever know whether there is a God, but right now you don't have a God, you're an atheist. Hmm. If you don't have a God because you've examined all the evidence and you've read every book from Dawkins and every book from Harris and every book from Hitchens and you're 100% sure that there's no God, you're an atheist. I guess I'm not sure I agree with you that if you don't have a specific God in mind, then you are necessarily an atheist, right? I mean, for example, I can imagine, a, like, I, I don't consider myself an atheist. I, I think I'm agnostic, but when I say agnostic, I think part of the higher power that created the universe I think it easily could just be a very, it could just as easily as Jesus, or I don't believe in Jesus anyway, I mean, I was raised Jewish, it could just as easily be a very advanced, uh, uh, you know, a, a very advanced technology that makes us think that we are in this huge universe and it's all very controlled. That, to me, is just as believable as a man in the sky, probably more believable, to be completely yeah, honest. Probably, probably a lot more believable. But I don't think that. that that really makes me an atheist, does it? I don't feel like I'm an atheist. Do you have a God? A specific God, or do I believe that a higher power exists? Do you believe in a higher consciousness? I mean, there's, there's different levels of agnosticism. Yeah. And some agnostics, you could call a deistic agnostic. But really, when it comes right down to it, do you have a belief in a God? Do you have a belief? I have a belief that there very well could be a higher power more advanced than me. Do I think it is a deity per se? No, 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 no I don't think so then you're an atheist. Really? Yes. I just don't feel like an atheist. I don't know. That's because, that's because you've I've been, been conditioned. Told, you've been conditioned. You <laughs> have. You've been conditioned to think that an atheist is a very, very small subject, a, a, a Grinch-like character who hates everything, is real angry. But atheism is very, very broad, and mm. there are all different kinds of atheists, my kind and your kind. Last thing, did you grow up an atheist? When did you, were your parents atheists? How, how did this all happen? I could tell, I could spend a lot more than uh, just a few minutes on this. I was raised in a Jewish home. Uh, my mother uh, insisted, I was an atheist when I was six. I remember the moment that I became an atheist when I was six years old. Very clearly, nothing happened to, to instigate it. <laughs> I lost God, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, and uh, uh, Santa Claus all at the same time. Um, I didn't believe ever. Uh, I went to, I had my bar mitzvah as an atheist. And I stood up in front of my friends and my family during my bar mitzvah, and I said, let us declare the greatness of our God and render honor unto the Torah, which God gave through Moses as a heritage of the congregation of Jacob. I had the whole thing memorized. Didn't believe a word of it. My mother knew I didn't believe a word of it, but I didn't get a choice because I was 13. So I went through the whole bar mitzvah. I went through the confirmation process uh, as an atheist. Um, and I asked a whole bunch of questions in Hebrew school, and it never stuck. Interestingly... It wasn't until I was 30 years old and New Jersey State Director of American Atheists that my father came out to me and told me he was an atheist. 
Incredible. Well, that seems yeah. like a whole story for another day. David Silverman, president of American Atheists, atheist.org. Oh, one more thing, if I could. The convention prices for students have been dropped to $20, including membership. So for $20, a student can come to our national convention and see PZ Myers, Greta Christina, and Christopher Hitchens for 20 bucks. Please spread the word. Hitchens alone is worth the 20 bucks. You betcha. All right. Thanks, David. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks a bunch, David. All right. And similar to David Silverman, nothing at Hebrew school sticking for Lewis either. You got tossed out of Hebrew school, right? Was that what happened? No, I just quit. Very good. We'll take a break. <laughs> we'll be back after this. DavidPackman.com. The David Pakman Show at davidpakman.com.